We are really thrilled today to have Bob Johnson from Humana join us alongside Alois Reitbauer from Dynatrace to talk about what running at scale looks like and what that means for a company the size of Humana. Come on up. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, for joining us. Thank you. Nice shirt change. I like Hello. it. For those of you that haven't um, checked out the new shirt, move fast and don't break things. I feel like that's a good theme for, I don't know, maybe the last week, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Facebook joke. <laughs> uh, yeah. Too soon? Too soon? But thank you both for joining us. And I was really excited to, to talk to both of you because I do think for many of the users, particularly here, the work you're doing at Humana is super interesting and super important because we talked a lot about some of the other industries changing, but healthcare is changing really quickly as well. And digital transformation is obviously something you probably think a lot about these days. And, and it's been great. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier, and you're like, well, we're not running that much. But when I think about enterprises, even if you're running just a few apps, you're still running at scale because you still have thousands and thousands and thousands of users, even if it's an internal application. And that creates a whole different set of issues. So you want to tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing and really what your focus has been? Yeah, thanks, Abby. Absolutely. So uh, we're no different from any other customer, obviously, in terms of wanting to go fast and, and really doing it uh, at scale, focusing on pipelines and, and delivery. But uh, we absolutely bring in a component of operational excellence and focus relative to operations to the table. And specifically, what can we do to make sure that we stay as resilient and as stable as possible? And there are lots of components to that. The other piece of this is really when you think about the DevOps three ways, um, the middle way being feedback loops, which we've already talked about a couple times today. Um, tightening those feedback loops is of utmost importance uh, from, from our perspective. So um, we, uh, we really look at a lot of different ways to do that. We employ several different tools and several, several different attempts uh, to go after that. Um, some of the things we're able to do is bring uh, some of our legacy monitoring solutions to the table, uh, application performance solutions, uh, application performance management, and um, you know, Dynatrace is really a key piece of that as well. Um, but it's, it's really all about what can we do to optimize our processes and, and really tighten the feedback loop. How can we get as much information back in the hands of the developers as, you know, as we possibly can? And from my perspective, that's the most important thing uh, that we're doing uh, to really tighten things up. So just to hit on that point, because I think it's important, the feedback loop is the most important part. Absolutely. So it's, it's very important to go fast, but again, don't, don't break things, right? That, that's really a key thing. Um, and then the other piece of it, I think, is, you know, what can we do to employ shortcuts? So a lot of IT is really focused on what can we do to, to drive automation and to optimize things that are sort of traditional IT. So how do we, you know, really take a quantum leap forward? So if you think about the Boston Marathon, it's a 26.2 mile race. Think about if you can actually, you know, cut that kind of, kind of in the middle or across the field a bit. Um, and save a little bit of time. And that's kind of the concept that we look at uh, relative to Cloud Foundry. That's a key piece for us. Again, using that for systems where it makes sense. We've got several systems where it doesn't you know, necessarily apply. Um, but that, that's really been a key part of our strategy. Which is, is phenomenal. And I, and I know that's probably top of mind for everybody else in this room as well. Um, I know Dynatrace has been a big part of, of that journey for you. Um, is that an asset that you're going to continue to build on? Or you know, how, what kind of difference is that making to your organization? Yeah, from, from our perspective, uh, Dynatrace is really a capability that we've invested in for quite some time, right? So it was very fortuitous for us to be able to, to leverage that technology and apply it as a feedback loop, um, specifically to um, you know, kind of to the new world, if you will, the Cloud Foundry world. So having the ability to take an existing uh, tool that we had built a number of operational processes around and apply it in the Cloud Foundry world was really key for us. So we, we've kind of talked a little bit about the tech, but I feel like where you're also saying is the culture change has been an important piece of that change for Humana as well. And thinking about 
how do you make this change? How, how has that journey been for Humana? Yeah, um, it's been a journey and it continues to be a journey, right? So um, obviously with any, uh, any group, you've got a number of people that embrace the, the change that, that uh, you're looking to, to drive, but the desire for speed doesn't change. I mean, that's getting you know, much more important as we, as we move forward. Um, so I think the, the need for acceleration is really key. Um, again, it, it's like most other things. You, you roll out certain um, approaches to software engineering and, and development, uh, and some groups embrace that. Um, other groups are a little slower to the table, but you know, as, as part of our journey, uh, we're really focused on um, you know, leveraging Cloud Foundry uh, to really drive that and push that, push that ahead. I'm gonna put you on the spot for a minute. I know I told you I wouldn't do that, but I am. What is, what is one lesson you've learned from this journey so far that you think would be really helpful for other people that are maybe just starting down this path and are just trying to figure out what to do? Yeah, that, that, that's actually an easy one. Um, the one thing that, that we find has been missing in a lot of uh, enterprise um, spaces specifically you, you have, and we all know this, you have an operational world uh, and a development world. And it's very uh, difficult to kind of find that common language. So to the extent that we can leverage uh, capabilities and tools uh, to drive that common language, to the extent that we can maybe take some of the tools that, that people are using um, you know, in the operational space uh, and shifting those and putting those in the hands of the engineers, um, that's probably the biggest lesson learned is to focus as much on that as possible. So again, don't just necessarily look at these tools as monitoring tools, look at them as performance tools. Don't necessarily look at them, you know, for the use case that's maybe the most popular use case, but try to find places where it applies to the developer. And, and I think from my perspective, that's, that's been our number one uh, lesson learned. That's a powerful lesson. And, and I love how you're, you're putting the developer first in this story. It's not the, the tech first or the end game first. It's you're putting the developer first as you build this solution around them and really absolutely make that fast. Yeah. Um, While still doing that under control. Well, control is helpful, yes. Um, you know, it turns out you, if you are a publicly traded company, you just can't take the year off to go and rehab everything. Exactly. Because I think that would make it easier, though, right? It might. But, you know, it's been such a, a fascinating to hear that because I think what we hear a lot about is starting that journey, but how do you get started and how do you get the momentum and then how do you do it and still able to meet the demands of your customers, both internal and external if you're a, a large company. And I think Humana really hits on that because this is a journey um, you've been on for a couple of years, but you know, to your point, there's still a little road left in that journey. Absolutely, start small and then scale, uh, which is the name of the game. And, and don't break things. And don't break things, yeah. Uh, anything you would like to add from Dynatrace's standpoint around this journey? I know you've been working quite yeah. closely with Humana for a while on this. We're working quite closely with Humana and a lot of other enterprises. And what we have really seen happening over the last year that cloud really goes mainstream in the enterprise as well. So we have really seen it, um, also back to that statistics that you showed before, that it's no longer that pet project inside the company, but cloud is a core building block of your future application and IT strategy. And that's also why we, how we see Dynatrace really fitting well together with Cloud Foundry. So the analogy that we use is autonomous self-driving uh, IT. And the idea is you want, ideally like a self-driving car, um, you want it to get you from A to B, right? You don't care so much how you get from A to B. You don't care when you have to shift, when you have to change lanes, when you have to change direction, but you want it to happen in a safe way. And that's how the two technologies play well together. So what we provide is more or less the software uh, behind to tell you, okay, something's going wrong along the way. You should go somewhere else. So it's not so smart to change lanes right now because there's a car coming right after you. But what we also tell our customers along the journey we're not running applications. That's not what Dynatrace does. We provide a platform that helps you to manage and optimize your applications, but not run them. And that's why we tightly work uh, together with Cloud Foundry and also tell our customers, in order to really go down that, that vision of having your IT infrastructure manage and run itself and only get you into the game in the case of an exception, you also need to have an underlying platform that's actually able to do that. If you have an application that's your so nothing against legacy technology, but a 25-year-old GE application that you still deploy via FTP 
on a Solaris system that's more or less out of warranty right now, it won't help you to have the smartest systems uh, realizing that there's a problem going on because the system is not able to do anything with this information by scaling up, by changing things, by rolling back changes and so forth. So I just learned something. My Solaris system's out of warranty. Uh, that's going to be interesting. You can do it on Solaris too, but... <laughs> Okay, that's going to be a problem for later. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Is really you know how you help that, how you package that up. But you know one of the things we start talking about is as we're running at scale, what does that look like? How do you manage that? How do you orchestrate that? And also, you know what happens when there's a failure? How do you yeah. know there's a failure? How do you uh, you know really you know pinpoint that? I think the key difference is you don't manage it yourself. You have to really change your approach towards operation. So what we've seen in the past, that would, what we refer to more or less a data on glass approach. So you have this big knock room. So there's rooms there, there's no daylight, pretty much like in here. Hey, we have daylight this time. Yeah, back there. Uh, so a lot of screens, you watch those screens, and then when something happens, you kind of act on... on reactive. Re re you're reactive. purely reactive. It, it's a scripted action. and. You have people watching screens, but that doesn't scale. It's fine if you run at, uh, say, 100 servers. It's already a lot of work to do with 100 servers, don't get me wrong. But what we've seen, um, what happens when people approach, um, move towards a more cloud-native approach, that their environments tend to get 20 times bigger. So it's 20 times the size, even for the same applications, because you break it down into microservices. It's more individually scaled components, which is great. It just adds complexity. Does it now mean that you will also add 20 times the people? No, you don't. So you also have to uh, make this part of looking at data, analyzing data, and automate it as well. And that's where really um, the, the approach that we have comes in, where we have built an AI component. And I know today everything is AI. But think of it more or less building a system that does a lot of the analysis uh, that a human would do into a software system and automate these processes. Because as you automate how you run your replication, you also automate how you manage your replication. And human intervention should be the exception and not the rule. Like today, if you have to SSH into your uh, PaaS platform, something is terribly wrong right now. It's true. And it's the same for when you push something through your pipeline. If a human has to look at what you're pushing through your pipeline, something is most likely wrong as well. It should be wrong. That should be the reason why human intervention is needed. We heard before about shifting left security. We see pretty much the same happening for performance. It doesn't help you to develop and then at the very end realize once your first customer hits your site, oh, this thing is actually slow or they cannot log in or they cannot perform any other tasks. So that shifting left piece is also part in there. And what we've also seen that this additional visibility to Bob's point, what we've really seen that uh, visibility also creates responsibility. You can't expect your developers to feel responsible for things breaking into production if they have no access to their data. How can you feel responsible for something that you don't know about? And the positive side is then responsibility creates a lot of entrepreneurial thinking with people. OK, this is how I can improve it. It starts to be really fun seeing, OK, this change really had that positive impact. So I think that's how we have to rethink how we work with data. It's not just keeping the lights on, as we've heard before. So how do we move forward and what's the next step for us? I and think that's don't break things. Move fast. The cautionary tale, don't break things. You know, maybe you should some of those to Mark Zuckerberg. Well <laughs> I find myself hilarious. <laughs> But that's also, I think, a, uh, a great example here to, like that example. You should know when things happen. And you should. And that was where and where things come into play for the enterprise. We talked about security also before. And especially in the observability domain and, and the monitoring domain, security also plays a, a, a vital role. So back to that point, so like historically, we see usually you had like monitoring individual for individual apps. So you were looking at apps individually, but now you have a platform that runs pretty much Full stack. a lot of stuff. So Full how stack. do you segment? So how do you segment there, and how do you ensure that people only see what they should see? So I think that security topic is also extending into monitoring as well. And we have, for example, introduced a concept which we call management zone. So we are directly extracting organization information and other information out of Cloud Foundry and dynamically create um, 
uh, access rules for, for this type of information, which is also key because the two of us might ha be able to look at the same dashboard, but we might be uh, only able to see different types of data. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love how you know, you're talking about being proactive and, and, and really taking a proactive approach to the way you're architecting and deploying your option. You're tying that with your, your, the way you're really putting that feedback loop in. And I think combined those two things really put you in a powerful position to not only deploy new apps, but scale. And for, for the Humana case, you run a lot of, you have a lot of very critical data like other companies you were joking about. <laughs> in this case, even more critical, but you, on the one hand, you talk about like information democracy, making information available, which you also want to do for your developers, but still you need to ensure that they only see the information that they should be seeing, right? Right. Well, that is a super powerful story and I'm, I'm really thankful that you were both able to join us today. Bob, thank you so much for sharing the story Absolutely. that Humana has been on. I know that everyone is, is taking notes about the journey you're on and Alois always, thank you. thank you for bringing the t-shirt. Thank you both for joining <laughs> me. Thanks.